Hello everybody, welcome back to Taste of Reality. My name is Queenie, for those who don't know me, reviewing The Ultimatum, episode nine. Now, I've already seen the reunion, but I'm going to give my opinions in the way that I was feeling them in the moment. Like literally, I'm a psychic. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm a psychic. I knew, I knew I'd be knowing. So before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and the reunion review will be coming out tomorrow. All right, so the first people to um, resolve the ultimatum are Shanique and Randall. And while they're recapping the experience, Shanique says that she admits that she did not appreciate the things that Randall offered in their relationship prior to coming on the ultimatum and now is realizing that she could have done more of that and has grown in that way. So the way these two were crying, at this point, I was convinced that either they were going to break up or they knew this, this wasn't gonna last very long. You are my best friend. And the love you give me is something I can't explain. Will you marry me? Yes. I love this. And I love it too. Now let me read to you what I wrote down verbatim. Okay? Verbatim. I said. I'm going to wait for the reunion before I speak on them because I don't want to seem like a hater. So for right now, I'm wishing them well. Mmm. Listen, my issue with the two of them was the whole point of this was to go into a trial marriage with somebody else to kind of pinpoint the deficits in your own relationship, the deficits in yourself, and how you can grow and show up better in that relationship and what things overall can be fixed with your partnership. I feel as if they might have worked on stuff and they might have truly thought that they were trying, but when they came back together, they didn't really explain what it was that has changed between the two of them. Like I said in the last video, the only thing that Randall really highlighted was the fact that he was very um, open and vulnerable with Madeline, which was not something that he was doing, at least in the latter half of their relationship with him and Shanique, and that her greatest improvement was that now she's on time for dates. Could have been editing, could have been conversations they had behind the scenes. However, based off what we were consuming, I did not see enough evidence for me to justify them being engaged. I was looking at this like, mm, hot ass mess. I'm so sorry, hot ass mess. The engagement was cute and all. I mean, you know, the emotions is something that you want, I guess. But the emotions for me were kind of like, Okay, we ride together, we die together. Bad marriage for life. Bad marriage for life. <laughs> that's terrible. So that's it. I'm going to save the rest of my thoughts for the reunion video. Moving on to April and Jake. Jake says that he doesn't want the last three weeks to ever happen again in that, you know, the toxicity between the two of them, the way that he came in angry after his trial marriage with Ray, he just didn't like the environment that they were in at this point. He um, he said all of that because he loves her and he cares for her and that he's not running off with Ray but he's not running off with April either. I tried to push every little bit of me to, to get to that point. I'm just not ready for it myself. I'm sorry that I couldn't get there. Never expect this time. My thing for April has always been, if the desire for children is greater than the desire for a partner, go at it alone. And some people in the comments were saying, but there's a stigma against single mo what does that gotta do with her? Stigma or not, if motherhood is what you want, be a mother. We live in a day and age, we have you know scientific advances where you don't have to have a physical partner with you in order to have children, right? And so me watching her throughout the season, I was like, this is, this, your issue is not wanting to get married. Your issue is you wanna be a mom and unfortunately the person who you've been with for two and a half years doesn't wanna be a dad 
right now. So stigma or not, if the desire to be a mom is greater than partnership, I say go down that avenue. She claims she has the financial resources to not need a man in her life. So girl, get your village, round up the people them, and raise your baby, right? With Jake, he... Hmm. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, at the end of the process, he was supposed to propose and they, they didn't really specify what kind of proposal that he was supposed to propose, but he proposed. Two tickets, <laughs> anywhere in the world. <laughs> Me and you just, um, just live in life. <laughs> Would you like to go? Yes. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm not surprised that these two ended up together. Um, yeah, I just... I think Ray is too... Uh, I get so scared saying like matter of fact things when I when you just are basing off of an edit. I just, I still think she's too immature. Even if she finds her voice, she's too immature for such a serious relationship. I think maybe some some life needs to be lived, some time alone. I don't know if she was in a relationship even just prior to Zay, but it seems like relationships are kind of her identity and I would like to see her form her own identity. So it's great that they found this great relationship between the two of them, but I think they both could do with some alone time. They really could. And I do think that they are gonna be susceptible to relapsing. If Zay and Ray really were having sex three times a day, every damn day, how do you go from that to nothing with that person? They were bound to relapse, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think that it was best for them to just be friends and maybe discover things, have some time to heal, take a, just take a break, you know? With Zay, he was saying he's glad that he came through this experiment. He learned a lot about himself. He learned a lot about what he wants to see in a relationship and that clearly this wasn't the one for him. Right now in my life, a, a, a lot of things are um, uncertain for sure but uh i think one thing that that is certain is that i'm leaving this experience a, a better person and uh, a, a better man all all the best to all of them april find somebody who you love enough that even if you didn't have a child you would still be content in life so when it came to madeline and kobe didn't they just break up in episode eight? I I was confused because I thought she was like, hey, this is it. I can't deal with this. It is what it is. So imagine my surprise when they pull up and it's, you know, it's the romantics. See, that's the thing that production should have shouldn't have done. They should have had like a romantic proposal thing for everybody so that you can't really tell who's gonna break up. Cause the way and Jake and April put up to the bench, I was like, well, nobody's getting proposed to at a bench, right? So when they showed up, I was like, no, 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 no. What is happening? And sure enough, he proposed and she said yes. <laughs> Why the hell would she say yes, knowing what we know? Her friends ain't riding for him. The parents ain't riding for him. Your castmates ain't riding for him. But you're going to say yes to this man? I'm confusion. I'm very confused. The book doesn't even stop there. They get married on the spot. My dreams have come true. I'm with the girl of my dreams. <laughs> I'm so happy. Mm. What about you, baby? <laughs> so I can't. I'm so lovey-dovey right now. <laughs> so when you are engaged, of course you are agreeing to marry this person. For me, I feel like the only reason why I would drag out an engagement is for planning. If we're engaged, I'm saying I'm okay with getting married to you to today. All right. So I'm not mad at the fact that they got married right away, but the fact that it was these two specifically, I felt like it was kind of a way to 
make sure she doesn't have enough time to change her mind. You know, that's how it felt for me because she had all these doubts. She was the most pessimistic coming into this thing. She had a lot of pushback from her in her circle. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, I love you. It's always been you. Let's get married. To his to his credit, he has been saying it's always been her. Even before the, the um, first trial marriage, he had always said, I... I just want to be with her, right? But, but her pessimism for me would have been enough to at least decline the engagement. And then who's going to force y'all to really split up? Y'all can go home and work things out, you know? Like, you didn't really have to get married on the spot, but they did. So, hey, Godspeed, I guess. Yeah, so that's the end of that. I'm thinking, should I just make, no, I'm gonna make them two separate videos because I have a lot to say about the reunion. I felt like it was very poorly executed. A lot of people felt that way about Love is Blind. No, this was way worse in my opinion. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video so we can kiki. And then we're gonna go live probably Saturday night to really talk about things. So as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.